See this whole issue where T4 can be converted into reverse T3? Well, excess cortisol, excess stress causes more T4 to be converted to reverse T3 instead of T3. Now, you guys tell me if that happens, is that good or bad for the metabolism? Is that good or bad for the metabolism? That's right. It's not really good for fat burning, is it? Because excess cortisol keeps more reverse T3 from happening. And if you remember what happens with reverse T3 and free T3, free T3 stimulates metabolism and fat burning, reverse T3 suppresses it. So we do not want too much cortisol. That is important. Now, let's look at one more factor here. TBG, this protein that floats around in the blood and binds up T4 and T3. There are several hormones that interact with that as well. One is estrogen, which will increase the amount of TBG. Now you tell me if something increases the amount of TBG and binds up free T4 and free T3, is that good or bad for fat burning metabolism? It's bad, right? That's not what you want to have happen necessarily. So people who are on oral contraceptives who are taking or, or hormone replacement therapy and things like that sometimes can have a negative estrogen effect on thyroid. And this is one of the reasons why, by the way, women have bigger thyroid glands than men and produce a little bit more uh, thyroid hormone compared to men because their estrogen can in negatively influence TBG. Now, on the other end of the equation, there's another hormone testosterone that lowers TBG. Now, what is this going to do? Is this good or bad for fat burning? It's probably going to be good, right? Because what it's going to do is lower TBG and make more free T4 and free T3 available, right? So this is what you can do. So there's a test that we're going to talk about in a minute that will tell you about TBG. And that's the reason that we're going through this. So really quick review one more time, because I know this is the first time you're seeing this stuff. Your, your head is probably swimming right about now. But let's go through it one more time. In the thyroid gland, the thyroid makes mostly T4 and very little T3. That T4 then goes into the bloodstream and is converted into T3 or reverse T3. Where's the conversion happen? You guys tell me, where does the conversion mostly happen in the body? Liver is one spot. Where else? Kidneys, gut, that's right. Liver, kidneys, digestive tract are the big ones. Mostly the liver and kidney. Next is the digestive tract. Now, what happens from that point is now you have bound T3 and T4, which is bound to thyroid binding globulin, and free T4 and free T3. Which are the active hormones, the bound or the free? Cool. You guys are you guys got this. I see everybody sort of jumping in. So it's the free, not the bound. The free are the ones that are going to be active. The free T3 is what's going to go and bind and interact with the cells. That's important here in just a minute. Tests to run. So we had to go through that so that you can understand the test to run. Now, everyone here is from different places. We have people from Switzerland, we have people from India, we have people in the UK, we have people here in the United States. Unfortunately, I can only speak about labs in the United States, but it's going to be pretty much the same. Okay. Now, there's one test on here called the TSH test. You guys remember TSH? TSH is what is sent from the pituitary gland to the thyroid to stimulate thyroid hormone production. Well, the first test here, a chem panel a CBC, which stands for complete blood count, and a TSH. That's what most doctors will run. The TSH is the only test they will run to look at thyroid function. Now, here is the interesting thing about that. If you have too much reverse T3 being formed, will TSH be low or high? It probably will be. It could be completely normal. If thyroid free T4 and free T3 are not in proper order, could TSH still be normal? Yes. If the thyroid gland, thyroid hormones are uh, a little bit low or not interacting with the cell receptors correctly, could TSH be normal? 
Yes. In other words, what I'm saying is TSH is an inadequate test to run for people who have functionally deficient thyroid production. It will certainly catch someone who's really dealing with overt hypothyroid. Not always, but most of the time it will. But for those who are dealing with sort of stress-induced hypothyroid from chronic dieting or from uh, extreme exercise and things like that, not always. And so there's other tests that you're going to want to run. You're going to want to run a free T3 and a free T4. Now, you guys tell me, why would you want to run those, right? Because those are the things that are most active in the system, right? That's why you, why you would want to run them. You'd also want to run a reverse T3, right? Because you want to get that number. Now, not all countries will do this. As a matter of fact, I have a client in Canada right now who has a very difficult time getting them to run a reverse T3 on her, uh, her, her physicians. And the other test here is a T3 uptake, which uh, most people probably have not heard of, but that tells you indirectly what's going on with that TBG protein. So if you're taking notes, a T3 uptake that is lower than normal means there's extra estrogen exposure in the body. A T3 uptake that is higher than normal means there's extra testosterone in the body. So this would be important if you have a client who's weight loss resistant and you get a thyroid panel done on them and they bring it, you know, their doctor does it and they bring it in for you to look at and you see a T3 uptake that is high, right? That is high. Or you see a T3 uptake that is low. This will help you distinguish between whether they are PCOS and testosterone dominant or whether their hormone replacement therapy or their oral contraceptives are causing issues with thyroid function. Can you see how important that might be to look at? Also with thyroid antibodies, what if you have an immune system that is attacking the major proteins that help you make thyroid hormone to begin with? That TPO protein or thyroglobulin. You need to know that. So you would want to run thyroid antibodies. And a couple of other uh, tests here, homocysteine, which high amounts of homocysteine can cause thyroid receptor resistance, meaning that when the thyroid binds to a cell, if there's a lot of homocysteine around, it can't get to its receptor and have its effects. And then another test that you would want to run is an adrenal stress index test, which tells you about cortisol.